Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Ask Rob Trick where I try to answer your questions from the comments sections of my videos and if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below in the comments of this video and I'll do my best to answer them. So today I have several questions and I'm going to start with the easy ones first. Uh, this is from uh, Kevs3116. He says, how can I turn off shutter sound when shooting an auto? And uh, this was on one of my EM10 Mark II videos and unfortunately when you're in full auto mode uh, you cannot select silent shutter mode you're forced to use the mechanical shutter. And I believe this has to do with the uh, flash because when you're in auto mode, the camera will decide whether or not it needs to use flash. And if it's going to use flash, it's going to have to use mechanical shutter. So that's the logic, I think, behind why you're forced to use mechanical shutter in auto mode. So your best option really is to just put the camera in the program mode, which is very similar to auto mode, but you get a little more control uh, specifically, you can change to silent shutter mode if you need to. Okay, the next one here is from Dave Bellamy, and he didn't really phrase this as a question, but I wanted to try to answer this because you actually can do the things that you're saying that you cannot do. Uh, so I'll just read here. It says, the feature that is on the M10 Mark II that I miss on the M5 Mark III is the magnifier that you can use on video. That's like a 4X teleconverter and allows you to switch to a close-up type shot instantly during filming. Uh, and then the second part here was uh, the autofocus on the M10 Mark II cameras seem to work on videos only in the motion JPEGs. Uh, I have to use the manual focus clutch to film in MOV files. All right, so let me address the first question about magnifying during filming. And I think this is what you're looking for. If, if I didn't answer this correctly, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but uh, let me show you how to set it up so you can do the magnify while you're filming on the M5 Mark III. All right, so I have my M5 Mark III. I've put it into movie mode. And uh, let's just go into the menu and go to the movie menu, then go down to button menu. And we're gonna reprogram the ISO button to be the magnify button. Or not, not magnify, actually it's called something else. So let's see, it's not the digital teleconverter and it's not magnify, it's actually this one, it's uh, the movie frame targeting button, which is kind of a weird name, but let's click okay on that. Now let me push record and you can see it's recording and while I'm recording I can punch in when I push the ISO button now. Push it once, it frames it and I can move the frame around a bit and then uh, using the D-pad, right? And then push it again and it punches in. Push it again, it punches out. And let's stop recording. And if I play it back it should punch in and out. Let's speed that up a little bit. There, see it punched in and it punched back out. Now there is one caveat to using that feature and that is it doesn't work in 4K modes. So cinema 4K or regular 4K, you can't use that movie framing. However, in regular full HD modes, you can use that movie frame mode where it magnifies in and out while you're filming, just like it did on EM10 Mark II, which only went up to full HD anyway. Now the second part of the statement here is that the autofocus on my M10 Mark II cameras seem to work on videos only in the motion JPEGs. I have to use the manual focus clutch to film MOV files. So that doesn't make any sense to me because the M10 Mark II does continuously autofocus when you're recording movies. Um, in fact, I'm using the M10 Mark II right now. And if I put my hand up, you can see it autofocuses from my hand back to me, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, we're good. So let me show you one setting that may make a difference, but I doubt it. It should work whether this setting is set or not, but I'll show you what it is. All right, so I'm going to show you on the Pen F, which is identical virtually to the EM10 Mark II in terms of movie settings. But right now I have the camera in movie mode, and you can see I'm in continuous AF, and that should be it. That should let you record with continuous autofocus. And you can see I'm in a full HD mode, not a uh, J, uh, motion JPEG mode, which is what you were saying you have to go into. You should be able to use it in a regular uh, .mov type file. And uh, the only other setting I can think of setting is go into your menu, go down here, go into your autofocus menu, and just turn on full-time autofocus. And the idea of this is basically 
Whether you're recording a movie or not, the camera will be continuously autofocusing. So this will sort of force it into an autofocus mode. I don't know if that'll help you or not. Uh, and of course, you know, make sure your clutch is not engaged while you're recording because that'll force it, as you can see, into manual focus mode. Uh, but it does that in the uh, motion JPEG files as well. So I don't think that's the problem. Uh, but hopefully that helps or is a workaround. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. All right, the next question here is from Jim Robinson. And he says that, Rob, I have an EM10 Mark II. Uh, I have a factory reset, installed the latest firmware, but it does not appear that the screen preview works in manual mode for this specific model. The workaround is that I have a manual lens for aperture and ISO manually set. Then I use aperture mode and change exposure, which in turn changes shutter speed. Uh, this aperture mode does have a screen preview. This aperture mode seems to mimic manual mode, given the manual constraints, but am I missing something? Okay, so that is a little tricky. I had to kind of read that several times to try to understand what you were asking me. But I think I know what you're saying is that when you're in manual mode, you're not seeing the changes in exposure. So you have to go into uh, aperture priority mode to see the change in exposure, then take those settings over into manual mode. Uh, and based on, I think it's a one setting you just need to change so that you can see the live preview of the uh, when you're in manual mode. Okay, so I'm going to try and duplicate what you're doing. And basically, you have an adapted lens, you're an aperture priority, and you have your ISO fixed. In my case, I have it fixed at 6400. And uh, when you adjust the aperture, you can see the shutter speed changed to what's that, one one hundredth of a second? or even slower, right? So as I'm adjusting the aperture, the shutter speed changes, and then you're going into manual mode and putting those settings in, because when you're in manual mode and you change the shutter speed, nothing is changing in the exposure. As you can see, that little red blob there is not getting brighter or darker no matter what I do to the shutter speed. Let's see, ISO might have the same effect. Yeah, it doesn't matter what ISO I put in either, right? So all you need to do is go into the menu and then go down to your cog menu or custom menu, go into display and uh, scroll down here until you see live view boost and then go over in here and you'll see manual shooting is set to on one, uh, which is fixing the live view to not change with the exposure. So we're going to turn that off and then you can read that there. But basically that'll get you back to a live preview. So now when I adjust the shutter speed, you can see as I'm lowering the shutter speed, it gets brighter. And then as I increase the shutter speed, it gets darker. Or as I increase the aperture, it gets darker and brighter with the aperture. And I think that's what you're asking. Now, one more thing I want to show you is that there is an EV meter. So even if I have this in on one, like so, where nothing changes when I uh, adjust the shutter speed, you can look at the EV meter here. This is your light meter, and it's telling me right now, for example, I'm one stop underexposed. So what I could do is just open the shutter speed a little more, and now I'm properly exposed for this particular scene without having to worry about what you actually see in the live view. But I get it. Sometimes you want to see uh, what it looks like and you're not worried about what the actual EV meter or light meter is telling you. All right, the next question is from JR, which coincidentally is a very similar question from Jim Robinson with the same initials. Uh, but JR says, Rob Trek, can you please help with the back LCD display brightness of the EM1 Mark II? I cannot find a way to adjust the brightness to be the same as I'm seeing the subject. So the problem is the screen is bright, but when I take a picture, the final image appears much darker. Okay, so it could be that you have the Live View Boost set to on one or on two, most likely on one, and you're shooting in manual. So you just need to do the same thing I just showed Jim Robinson to do. Uh, on the EM10 Mark II, you can do the same thing on the EM1 Mark II. However, there are some other situations uh, where the screen is brighter than what you're seeing in the final image, and I'll explain that. All right, so let's take a quick look at the menu. Um, we'll go down to the cog menu, and in this case, we want to go down to D2, 
live view boost and then just uh, make sure on one is turned off here on bulb you can only have on one or on two you can't actually turn it off uh, live view composite is off and others is off these are your p a and s modes uh, program aperture priority and shutter priority uh, make sure those are all off and then uh, the other thing you can adjust is you go down to your wrench menu and you can adjust the brightness of the screen to be very bright and that may be what's happening is you have the screen set to maximum brightness you can just set it back to zero or a little bit lower value so that it better matches what you're seeing in your images versus what you're seeing on the live view and then one more thing you might want to check and this is deals with your EVF actually not the live view but go all the way down to menu I which is for your EVF and then go down here and make sure your simulate optical viewfinder is turned off as well uh, this only affects the EVF and not the live view but just in case make sure that's turned off now assuming nothing's wrong with your camera one of those settings should resolve the issue but that said there are still some situations where the camera exposure or final image can be darker than what you saw in the live view and this is more common in very low light situations so let me give you an example here all right so let's put the camera into shutter priority mode and you'll notice as i'm increasing the shutter the exposure on the display doesn't change at all and let's say i'm at 1 250th of a second and i take a picture let's look at the final image it's much darker than what I saw. And if I increase the shutter speed to say 1 1,000th of a second, take a picture. Let's look at that one. This is almost completely black. So this is a scenario where what you see on the live view does not match what you see in the final image, right? Well, if you look closely, you'll notice that the aperture is blinking here and that we're using auto ISO and we've maxed out on the ISO. So what the camera's telling us is that it cannot achieve the exposure that we want uh, because it can't open the aperture up wide enough to let enough light in. And that's why the image is darker than what we see on the live view. So generally speaking, what you see in the live view should match the final image. But if there's anything blinking while you're taking that picture, either ISO, shutter speed, or aperture, then that means the camera is not able to achieve the exposure that matches what you see in the live view. So I hope you found that helpful. If so, maybe consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation and link below. And if you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, but either way, I really appreciate you watching and I hope to see you again soon.